Well folks, I've been trying to do this for about a month now, but today is the day. We're going to review the F100 Auto Steer System from Sviverken. So I have just reversed the big girl out the shed here just so we can get a bit better daylight in the cab there. I don't think we're going to muck around this morning, we're just going to jump straight into it. So without any further ado, let's get into this review. So firstly we're going to start off in the cab up the top here with the screen. Now, I have spoken quite a lot about the screen in the uh, installation and the testing video. Really, really like the screen. Very slick, very easy to use, very functional, easy to navigate, all those things. I, I really do not have a bad thing to say about the screen. I'm sure I did mention during the testing video that, you know, as it is with any new bit of technology you get, you always go through that initial learning period. And this was no exception, of course. You've got to get your head around how it works. And in many respects, this system was quite different to any other auto steer system I'd used. I don't mean that in a bad way at all. We like we were just absolutely amazed at how easy it was to set up um, AB lines, fields, boundaries, all that sort of stuff. It really was an easy screen to use. Now I'm not going to get too involved with the operation of the screen or anything like that in this video. This is purely just a review video. If you want to see some of the installation or the operation, I'll link those other videos and you can you can see the rest of the journey with this system there. Now if you are a simple no fuss type of person like I am, then you'll probably really enjoy the amount of wiring in the cab for this system. This is one thing I really liked about it as well. The system that we had in here before, that was just a rat's nest of wiring in here. It was a mess. It looked horrible. This is just so much more simple. So we'll just trace it down from the screen and I'll show you guys that. So we just got a couple of plugs here in the back of the screen and then that just zip ties up nice and neatly out the way. Just took that down the A pillar there. It's not a big fat wiring harness so it does tie up and just hides away quite nicely here along that A pillar. Just a simple on off toggle switch here to turn the system on and off and then if you come down the bottom which is normally where the bulk of the wiring is, um, it's just there's just not a lot there. It's just really tucked away nicely. It's quite tidy looking. Um, just one thing I really like about this system. The steering wheel. What can I say about it? It's an electronic steering wheel. It, it does the job. It's maybe a little bit bulkier than some of the other products I've seen out there, but you know, it, it does the job. It's fully tunable. You can, you know, just however you need it to be for your machine, you can make the adjustments in the screen. And I guess one of the biggest praises that I could sing for this auto steer system was that every day we'd come out to this machine here, we'd fire it up, we'd fire up the auto steer and it would just work all day. You know, we're over at Luke's with the stripper front on, 12, 13 k's an hour, roaring up and down his heels, and it would just bang that AB line all day long. And for that, we are really grateful, you know. I've been down that road with other products where, you know, you're dealing with problems all day that you shouldn't have and that you don't want to have. So the other thing I really liked was the V1 mobile base station. We had the F100 set up on RTK steering, so best level of accuracy sort of sub two and a half, three centimetres, I suppose you'd say. But where this thing really comes into its own, which I've spoke about also, is the fact that we have some land, we have RTK on one of our other systems, but you need to have phone reception for it to work. And we have land that doesn't have good phone reception. So that's where this thing really shines, um, being able to get RTK out there. Now I do understand it's a bit of a double-edged sword with having to move the base station around, but uh, I will touch on that on the other end of this video. I better not forget to mention one of the things that I absolutely loved about that system was the farm management system, which I also talked about in the testing video. You can get on there and you can map paddocks and set AB lines and all this sort of stuff before you ever get to the field. So that is an awesome little feature, absolute gold really. In summarizing guys, what can we say? Uh, the screen, Super slick, love the screen, uh, very functional and easy to use. 
The wiring that runs through the cab, um, it's very minimalistic. It zip ties up, it tucks away really, really nicely. I think the whole setup in the cab is actually very tidy. Um, installing the system, very simple, just about anyone can do it. The hardest thing is probably putting the receiver on the roof or maybe putting a wheel angle sensor on. But in terms of figuring out the wiring and stuff, because there's just not a lot of it, there's just not a rat's nest of wiring in there, it's very, very easy to put in. And lastly, as ridiculous as this might sound, every day when you go out to the paddock and you turn that steering system on, it works, which is two thumbs up. <laughs>so as much as i was singing the v1 mobile base station's praises before it did still come with its share of challenges and it's not really a knock on the base station itself because look this thing only has a certain range and you got to cart it around with you so there is that extra you know level of work it's very easy to move don't get me wrong it's just an extra thing that you had to do and we cheekily tried to stretch the range out a couple of times on it and we soon learned that really you're better off just having it as close as you sort of can really to where you're harvesting. So look, it's not really a criticism of it as such, but it's just a challenge that we faced. The only other thing I would say about this is, you know, having this receiver here up on the top of this pole is there's a couple of days it was a bit windy and I felt like we were possibly... You know, I could never really confirm. We just had a couple of days where the screen was sh holding the AB line, no worries. It was very windy outside and it would hold the AB line, but it would tell you you're like 10, 20 centimetres off of it. And I just wondered whether we maybe got a little bit of jiggling in the wind that would just confuse this thing a little bit. So, yeah, I guess that's just the only downfall of having it on a little stand like that. But we did end up lowering the receiver down. And generally just keeping it down a little bit lower. Whether that was the right thing to do or not, not sure. The next thing I would say, if you're getting one of these systems, is order it with a extension harness for the wheel angle sensor. Because the one that comes on the standard harness is just far too short, in my opinion. Straight away, first thing I would ask for if I was buying one is to give me the extension so that um, I can have plenty of length on the cable to get it out to where it needs to be. So one of the other challenges we had with this thing was we never got it to be totally awesome when re-grabbing an AB line, like getting back onto an AB line, especially if you're a long way off of it. And I just wonder because the system that was on here before suffered from the same symptoms really. Um, I just wonder whether because you've got your receiver all the way at the front there and your steering wheels all the way at the back you just look you tend to get this sort of bit of over exaggeration on the steering as it's trying to get you back on the ab line once it's on there absolutely spot on but you know like a head is a bit of a different beast isn't it because you're steering from the back there and you have got your receiver all the way at the front whereas if you look at this tractor and you imagine this had wheels at the front and the back you know you'd have your receiver up here oh, where am i pointing there and then you would have your um, front steering axle sort of down here somewhere so it's a really short distance and it doesn't take much of a, a movement probably to move the machine one way or the other i think with these bigger machines and that rear wheel steering it kind of tries almost too hard sometimes to get back on the line. I better not forget to mention that I did have to make a, or do a little bit of modification to the electronic steering wheel to put it on because once again, the steering column in the header is very, very different to the, what's in a tractor. So that didn't really bother me. Um, it was whatever, like I just did what I had to. I've fit this, these sorts of kits up before and sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do to, to make it work. But someone who's watched all the videos might point that out. So I thought I would mention it. If it was just going into a tractor, you would have no dramas at all. But cause that is a little bit different. I did have to make some um, changes there. Yes, I would love to continue using the F100 system and I plan on continuing to use it. I actually want to take it out of the header and I want to put it into the little Johnny 6510. I reckon it'd be a really awesome fit in that little tractor. Then we can have RTK steering on that little tractor all the time without having to pay for a subscription. Uh, so when we're doing things like spreading and whatnot, we can follow the same wheel mark. So that is the plan. I don't know when it's going to happen because I'm a little bit short on time, especially going away during March, but it is, it will happen eventually. We'll get it transferred over onto that smaller tractor and I really look forward to continuing being able to use it. Anyway guys, with all that being said, I would just like to thank Svee Verkin for sending me the F100 auto steer system. It has been a fun little adventure to install it and to test it out and a bit of a challenge for myself as well to make these review videos. Hopefully I've covered off everything that I need to in this video 
and if you are looking for an auto steer system I'll link them down in the description you can head over and check them out if you want maybe something a little bit more on the simple side as you can see it's a neat tidy little system I don't think you can go too far wrong so that's all I got for you guys today uh, thank you very much for watching we really do appreciate it if you want to support the channel you know what to do if not all good you guys have yourselves a good one till next time see ya